Now welcome to Coffee with Coach. We all know how to communicate, but even the best churches don't do a very good job of communicating. We know what we're supposed to be doing, but we tend to forget. And in the midst of all the stuff that's going on today, it's easy to forget. So today I want to give you 10 quick things to think about. Things you already know, but 10 reminders about how to communicate with your people. I'm Steve Petty, and I have three goals for these videos. To help you become a better pastor and leader, to save you time and money, and to help educate, energize, and motivate you to energize and motivate your church. Today's coffee cup didn't come from a church. It came from the Santa Fe Railroad. You see that logo? Or you see that super chief? And you know what you need to know. It's about the Santa Fe. A great railroad historic train. Logos communicate in an instant. You see the logo and you know something about that. It may have warm fuzzy feelings, it may not. What's your logo in your church? What's your coffee cup say? Today I want to talk to you about communication. In fact, every fourth Monday we'll be talking about communications. It's one of those things that we think about in the church, but we don't always do a good job. All the crises that come up day in and day out just seem to get in the front of our minds, and communication with our people tends to slip into the back of our minds. So we do a less and less good job of communicating. So today I want to talk about 10 things you should know. I'm going to go through these quickly. We'll come back in later weeks and talk about each one. 10 quick things you need to think about. In communicating to your people. Number one, there are two groups of people you need to communicate with. People who attend now and people you would like to have attending. Always communicate to both groups. Often churches just try to communicate with one, those people that are already in the pews. But you have to communicate with both, people who are there now and people who you would like to have attending. So remember that when you do your communications. Number two, word of mouth is not a communication strategy. I've seen churches stop their newsletter, stop printing bulletins, stop handing out anything, stop reaching out to people, stop advertising. They rely entirely on word of mouth to let people know that they're a great church and people should come. Word of mouth is not a communication strategy. Word of mouth is a strategy for failure. Number three, your online presence is important as your physical presence, your physical building, your church. Your church exists on a street. People drive by and see it. And if you have a sign out front, they can read your sign if they're walking. What is your online presence? Can people find you on Facebook? Can people find you on the internet? Can people find an image, an advertisement, a roadmap? Can people find out what's happening on Sunday? Your online presence is just as important in this day and age as your physical building. Pastors, your weekly column is just as important as your weekly sermon. You need to spend as much time writing that column and reaching out to people in print as you do reaching out to people with that sermon. Why? Because not everybody's in church on Sunday morning. Not everybody's going to log in and watch your online worship service. But if you're sending out an email, if you're sending out a newsletter, if you're sending out a column that goes out weekly, people have an opportunity to read that. You might reach an entirely different audience. But it is important to do that. It tells people who you are what you're thinking, and how you expect them to be responding. It's an important avenue for communications. Write the weekly column. Number five, advertising your church is important. When I started in local churches 50 years ago, many churches just advertised on the yellow pages. Oh, the anguish. Do we buy boldface? Do we put a graphic? Do we put a picture of the church? How big? How many column inches? And those things were expensive. 
increasingly churches did away with them. And then we went to small newspaper ads, and then we did away with those. How are you advertising today? How are you inviting people? Are you running an advertisement on your Facebook page? Do you run advertisements for people who click on it? It's really not too expensive, but it's a way to invite people who've never, ever been there. How are you advertising in this day and age? Invite people. Maybe they'd like to be invited. Number six, and this is critical, and you know it, but what are you doing about it? Different generations communicate differently. Probably not many of your 90-year-olds have an internet website. They may not even get email. They may not even have an iPad. So, how do you communicate with them? Your boomer generation, they're probably on Facebook. They probably get emails, but they probably don't tweet too much. Your younger generation, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they watch a, a dozen different sites. They're all over the place. How do you communicate with them? If each group is communicating in a different avenue, on a different channel, in a different wavelength than you're communicating, then if you're not there, you're writing off a whole generation. How are you communicating with all of your generations? Number seven, the quality of your online worship is as important and maybe more important than your in-house worship service. People who drive to your church on Sunday morning and sit in your pews are not likely to drive out just because things seem to be mediocre on Sunday morning. If the bulletin's misprinted, if the flowers are a little wilty, they're probably going to stay. They've taken the time. They have driven themselves physically into your place. They're there. But if you don't capture your audience in the first five seconds online, how easy is it to leave? It's a click away. So you need to grab people and show them that this is a quality experience that they will enjoy and you need to show them that and you need to grab their attention quickly. Countdown timers for five minutes before the worship begins are the quickest way to get people to click out of your worship service. Your online worship is critically important. Make sure the quality is first rate. Eighth, frequency of communication is critically important. How often do you communicate with your people, with all of your people, about what's going on? If you're not communicating with people two to three times a week about what's going on in your church and why it's important and what's wonderful that's going on, you're missing opportunities. They get emails from corporations by the dozens every day. Is your church one of them? Are you communicating frequently? Frequent communication is critical in this day and age. Get out there and get in line. Number nine. Number nine is kind of a throwback. Mail is still important. I know, physical mail. It costs money. But think about it. In a day when most of your mail is thrown into the recycle bin, and you get that first-class letter with a first-class stamp, and it's got a letterhead and a logo and a signature from the pastor, you read that. It's important because it's rare. So first-class letters are perhaps more important than they've ever been before. Two to three times a year when you want to communicate something really important to your congregation, consider sending out a letter. And make sure you send it to every member. And by this I mean kids that went through confirmation class, they're a full member. Don't just send it to the Smith family. Send it to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And John Smith gets his own because he's a full member in and of himself. You might even write those letters to the youth differently. It says, you are important. Your presence is important. Your church sees you as an important member. Mail can be a critical 
communications tool. And number 10, the pastor is the prime communicator. Now, you already know this because you preach every week and you think that your sermon is the most important thing people are going to hear that week. It is the prime communication you do. But your church communicates, as we've seen, in a variety of ways. How many people in the church are thinking about all of those ways? Only you, only the pastor, is thinking about all of those ways. All of these tools are at your disposal to use every week. Use them wisely. Use them all. Be on as many wavelengths and as many medias as you can to reach out and share the message about your church and the good news of Jesus Christ that you are sharing. If you're not, you're missing opportunities and you're leaving people out. Invite them. They probably want to be invited. So there you go. Did I make it in under 10 minutes? I hope I did. Think about these areas of communication. We will talk about communication every fourth Monday with the new videos from Coffee with Coach. So I hope you like these videos. If you do, consider subscribing. And I don't have to use a train cup. If your church has a coffee cup you'd like to have included in Coffee with Coach, send me a line. Send me a coffee cup. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to see it. I'd love to talk with you about what's going on in your church. Have a great week. See you next week.